polishing a turd. Am I literally gonna stand here and polish a turd? No, of course not. I'm going to figuratively polish a turd. We're talking about upgrading a pre-built system from an OEM manufacturer. And maybe I'm being a bit mean calling them turds, but let's face it, if you didn't build it yourself, or buy it from like, you know, a high quality system integrator, like NCIX, see I got that logo on my shirt, then it might be a turd. PC gaming is fun, but unfortunately, not everyone can afford to go the route of building an entire brand new PC from scratch. I mean, it's a good idea. It gives you a solid and reliable foundation that you can upgrade in the future, but it's just not always possible. So today, we'll be looking at upgrading an existing system for gaming. Casual, like, work-grade systems, office-grade systems that you buy pre-built off the shelf from large, like, tier one manufacturers, Sometimes they need a little bit of help to be ready for even games like League of Legends if you want to play them at decent detail settings. So most of these systems come with pretty good CPUs actually, but their graphics cards, if they have them at all, are often not up to the task of, you know, PCMR level gaming. So the obvious solution is to upgrade with a better video card, right? Right? Hold on. Not quite that simple. There's a few requirements that we'll need to go over before we can just run out and buy a video card and slap it in there. First of all, you need to make sure that your motherboard is actually compatible. You need to find out the motherboard's model number, even pre-built systems will have them, and figure out if it has a compatible PCI Express 16X slot. Ideally, PCIe version 3, but the good news about PCI Express is that it's actually backwards compatible all the way from 1 to 3 and forwards compatible. So don't stress too much about that. If your motherboard doesn't have a PCI Express slot, it's probably pretty old or pretty horrible, and you should probably not use it. Next, you will need a power supply that's powerful enough to support whatever video card you want to put in and all the other components. If you're not sure about power supply specs, you can take a look at this video here. Odds are, though, that most power supplies are enough for an entry-level graphics card like a GTX 750 Ti. Make sure you have enough wattage and amperage on the 12-volt rail. The specs for your graphics card will spell this out. And physical connectors to power whatever card you want to use. Try to avoid using adapters, as that's often a sign that your power supply isn't powerful enough or not designed for a dedicated graphics card, which is often the case because why would that system builder put in a power supply that's designed for upgrading if they really don't expect the audience for that computer to ever upgrade it? Finally, you need to make sure that your case actually fits a new video card, like physically fits. If your case is not a standard ATX size, but like a, a half width or a small form factor, then the odds are pretty good that you uh, are out of luck. Good gaming graphics cards are usually at least 125 millimeters tall, including their power connectors, so keep that in mind. You'll also need to measure how much room you have lengthwise, since many manufacturers stick non-removable hard drive cages in the way. The good news, though, is that short cards like the Fury X or uh, I want to say it was the 670 was pretty short. Anyway, there have been short cards in the past that can take up as little as 20 centimeters, but longer ones like a Gigabyte Win4 Shuba card can be 300 millimeters or 30 centimeters or more. Now, you could always transfer all your components over to a new case, but again, back to the motherboard. You'll want to take a look at that puppy and your power supply to see if they are actually standard components. Oftentimes, these manufacturers will work with non-standard parts there that are proprietary and not removable. I once ran into an issue filming, I think, I don't think that episode ever saw the light of day. Original cameraman and I, this was like six or seven years ago, we were at the studio for probably about 11 hours straight trying to film a like pimp my Dell type thing, very similar concept to this. And the thing that eventually defeated us was the non-standard front panel header. The video never got edited to my knowledge and we, we actually couldn't 
without like soldering leads onto it and like testing one by one to see what was the actual power switch or what wasn't like there were endless problems. So if you're not 100% sure about your computer and you're worried about running into something like that, contact the PC advisor at PC at NCIX.com. These guys are non-commissioned and they will help you out. So if you've met all of those requirements, and you don't run into any weird stuff like what I just said, then you're probably good to go. Grab a new graphics card, plug in the power, install it in the PCI Express slot, and enter gaming nirvana. But if you ran into any problems that involve replacing other parts as well, then you're... You're going to have to weigh your options because you may then just be better off building a system from scratch or at the very least just transplanting a couple select parts into an entirely new case power supply motherboard and all that stuff. Transplanting a system is not all that difficult either. Most of the time you'll be able to reuse the processor, RAM and hard drive so you're already halfway there and then if you have to buy a case and a power supply the good news about those is those might make it through several upgrades of things like motherboards and CPUs and video cards before you have have to replace them so it's not a terrible investment thanks for watching guys hopefully this helps some of you out there who want a game on a budget let us know in the comments below if you have an off-the-shelf manufacturer built system and whether or not you game with it what's the experience like also like and subscribe for more videos like this from ncix.com I wish I still had the footage from that, like, Pimp My Dell thing, because it was just one disaster after another. We'd be in the middle of filming, I'd be like, CRAP! Do we want to do the new outro? Uh, what is what did you do there? We, I just did the old one, but what's the new one? The new one is basically like a call of humor type thing, where we have most recent videos come up here and then social media come up on the other side. So we've just been saying, thanks for watching, that's pretty much it. Or uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, click here to watch more videos. Follow us on social media over here. Don't forget to, or, uh, or then, I, then I say like or dislike the video or whatever. And then don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCX. And then you can either walk off or just do something stupid. These are my only options. Yeah. I mean, you can do that or you can just do the old one. And It's up to you. Um, let's just use the, the current audio and do outro, that still works anyway. Okay. It's still rolling.